And now as we consider where we are today, we've come through the glorious season of Advent and Christmas, and I trust that you found inspiration and comfort uh, as we join together to recall the themes of hope, peace, and joy, and love in anticipation of the birth of the Christ child, who, as we learned on the fourth Sunday of Advent, ushered in a new reality, a new way of being as we considered how we would live this reality and make a difference in the lives of others and in our community. And this is especially acute for us in 2021, given what we've come through in 2020. So I find the, the first Sunday of January, I always find it as a, a pivotal Sunday in the new calendar year. It's a Sunday of new beginnings. As we are coming out of Christmas tide and we have yet to move into Epiphany, which will begin on uh, later this week. But as I walk in my neighborhood daily, a friend uh, down the street, ever since COVID has begun, has been putting posters in his window and interesting quotes, comical, some uh, wisdom. Uh, but I noticed this one the other day, and, and welcome 2021, be nice, and goodbye and good riddance 2020. I think that probably sums up a lot of what people are feeling these days um, about where we are in this uh, pandemic as we stretch toward a, a second year. But here we are in lockdown, and for its duration, we'll be streaming our services with just those involved actually here in, in the sanctuary. And once the lockdown is lifted, we'll open up our services again and we follow the protocols. And those of you who feel you would like to come and join with us, you'll be more than welcome. But you know, as we consider, I'm very, very thankful for technology and what it has meant to us. It's been a lifesaver for us this past 10 months, now we're into our 11th, as it has been for many congregations and businesses and organizations. But since last March, we've been able to come to you each week uh, into your living rooms every Sunday morning via Facebook. And I'm, I'm especially thankful for the faithful following each week online, and our numbers continue to uh, grow and climb in terms of numbers of views. And we thank you for your generous comments. And please leave a comment because that's the only way that we have of communicating uh, these days seemingly. But as challenging as technology can be by times, it has really been a blessing to us. And uh, Andrew Bruin has been at the center of making this available to us via Zoom and Google Meet and since last March. And all committee meetings are either on Zoom now or Google Team, or Google Meet rather. And our finance and properties, of course Andrew and Craig run all of these meetings and there are many of them online. Chris and Jane Brown and Ann Whitehurst are helping with uh, Zoom on for council meetings and, and uh, our outreach committee, LNGO, and Stuart and Bernadette Bailey for the, um, our Christian Development Committee and our book club and the spiritual practices and DOMS. Mike Mullen here has helped us with taking that online. We're streaming that on a weekly basis. And now our services are, are and will continue to be hybrid in the sense that once the lockdown is finished, we will have people here in the sanctuary, but we will continue to come to you online. And of course, this marvelous screen that you see here each week uh, that Valerie uh, Hindle, she uh, so generously uh, donated in remembrance of her parents and thanks to Conrad Waters for setting all that up. Not once, but twice. Thank you, Conrad. But um, Southminster has most assuredly moved into the technological dimension. 
If you consider where we were one year ago right now, uh, it would be, it's, it's quite staggering the, the change that has happened as we have moved on to digital platforms. And as we await the rollout of the vaccine, we will continue to depend on technology for some time to come. And I, I see our progress and comfort level with technology as a silver lining to our time of, of separation. It has helped us to be together even though we're separated, together but apart during this, this uh, time of pandemic. And our decision to go with a hybrid approach to ministry will remain. And in time to come, we'll invest further in this technology as we look to maintain the standard we have come to enjoy as our online congregation continues to grow. But as we look at new beginnings at the outset of 2021, I'd like to examine with you for a few moments the increasingly technological world in which we find ourselves. And not only the benefits that it holds for us as individuals, but as our community of faith and as a society as a whole, but also the inherent challenges that accompany our increasing dependence. Now here at Southminster, you are no stranger to this lady, Ursula Franklin, uh, German-born, survival of the Holocaust, Canadian citizen, scientist and longtime professor and researcher at University of Toronto, a Quaker, pacifist, feminist. You can read what is there. An amazing, an amazing woman. But I'd like to draw this morning on some of her uh, 1989 Massey lectures uh, that are being uh, revisited on ideas on CBC Radio, uh, they have and continue to be deemed quite prophetic. And I'd like to use some of her thinking as a lens through which to view our present situation as a society, as a community of faith, and as individuals, especially in light of communication and how technology facilitates communication in our present world, in our community of faith, and its subtle influences of which we should be aware. There is no turning back in our employing today's technologies and how we conduct our affairs both individually and collectively. Technology is here to stay and its pervasiveness will only increase. So what is to follow may be a little technical, no pun intended, but I will make application of her thinking to our reality. Now the first thing that I'd like to draw your attention to as you see there on your screen, compliance. Dr. Franklin spoke of prescriptive technologies as being designed to induce compliance. Designed to induce Compliance. You know, when I first arrived here at Southminster uh, back in way back in 2019, uh, I was getting along quite nicely with my old Mac until COVID hit. And Andrew began introducing and training us to use Zoom and Google Meet and other platforms. And some of us were already there, but some of us were not. We had to catch up in a hurry. And I started having trouble participating in meetings. And I kept getting messages that my operating system was not supported for these new platforms. I end up using my iPhone for meetings, which really was not the best. So what did I have to do? I had to get a new computer. Compliance. Now I'm getting messages on my new laptop where it says, Microsoft is ready to be updated. And you know, up there in the right-hand corner. But you'll notice, to say, you'll notice that it doesn't say, <clears throat> would you like to? It says, will this be now or later? It's not really giving me a choice. Compliance. And if I ignore it, eventually... I will live to regret it. 
Now, we've all been purchasing online. Everybody's doing it now. Or in, in dealing with the government. And we find that there is a prescribed way of conducting business online now. If you want to buy something or if you want information, you have to follow the prescribed directions and fill out all the electronic and digital fields. And if you leave something out, it will tell you. And so you see here, oh, those nasty red asterisks. Oh, I really have difficulty with those. But if you find yourself uh, seeing a red asterisk, that means that you missed something. You've got to go back. You can't, you can't go on. And so even when you click next, it won't let you proceed. Compliance. Compliance. The technology induces compliance. If you want to proceed... You have to play the game. Now, now you see the word reciprocity. Now, as Ursula Franklin moved her listeners deeper into her thinking, as I listened to her lectures online, she introduced this topic of reciprocity. She articulated how that the human interaction is changing. Now, this is in 1989. That's why her work is so prophetic. Because it still applies. Human interaction is changing with the introduction of technology in that it eliminates reciprocity. The face-to-face -face discussion. The give and take of human communication becomes less and less apparent. And is increasingly removed. Franklin makes the point that the absence of reciprocity with technological communication erodes important social parameters. And when communication is via text or social media, which is, it is often today, it lessens the importance of listening. It decreases, decreases one's capacity to understand or accommodate and our social interaction skills begin to atrophy like muscles not in use our social interaction skills begin to atrophy like muscles not in use now is this not what educator, educators and those in the social sciences have been talking to us about youth for some time? The Im impeding of their social skills due to the over-reliance on social media as a means of communication versus face-to-face in-person conversation. And as adults, I would suggest that we are not immune to the erosion of such skills. And Franklin explains that our normal social interactions proceed with certain characteristics. She defines them as internal logics. She makes the point that as technological structures conduct more and more of our social interaction, they carry with them the logic of technology. In other words, the technology that is programmed to respond in a certain way. And what emerges is a situation where the technology begins to overpower, where it begins to displace all other social logics. The logic of compassion. The logic of understanding. Obligation. The logic of ecological survival or, or the logic of linked into nature because in a very real sense, we are nature. I think, Merle, you would agree with that. The logic of technology begins to suffocate other forms of social knowledge. So with today's technology, we are one step removed from face-to-face -face social interaction. And the person with whom you are engaging is not present with you. And even though we are now able to engage with others via Zoom or FaceTime or Skype or whatever, it still is not the same as being in the same room with them. You would have to concur. 
Now, emails can be deadly, okay? As you can see, this young lady, she's not having a good day. Now, I had in a, a former congregation one parishioner that until the blind copy option of emailing was utilized properly, this person would get angry over something or other that he didn't quite like, and he would get a hold of the church email list and write a blistering email naming individuals, uh, those that were irritating him, and send it to the entire congregation. Didn't decide to discuss it with anyone. Just sent it out. Well, Monday mornings became very eventful. Uh, and it didn't take me long to uh, come to terms with the glitch in our, on our email list. I know of another family where a hasty written and extremely rude and unfeeling email was sent by one sibling to another. They have yet to speak. It's been 13 years. And I know nothing like that ever happens here. But we could all keep one another here for probably most of the day. Sharing stories of harmed relationships that we know that were due to emails or social media entries that never should have been written, let alone sent. The absence of reciprocity, the logic of technology, overriding, smothering, the social parameters of compassion, understanding, obligation, community. And the more we become accustomed to communicating via technology, the more we will find our social skills being, becoming atrophied. And as a community of faith moving together more deeply into the 21st century, let us embrace all of what technology brings because there is so much benefit. And thanks to Andrew and others, we are functioning on digital platforms like we never have before. But there isn't any going back. It's here to stay. And we will undoubtedly continue to benefit from its convenience. But in our incorporating technology as a means of doing ministry, as we move into a new year, let us be mindful of not losing the human touch. Let's make that special effort to be present with that person in need once we're all sufficiently vaccinated. But let's not allow the ease of technology to erode the quality of our personal interaction. And not allow the absence of reciprocity to shape our responses with one another and erode the social parameters of communication. And may the logics of compassion, listening, and understanding guide our thoughts and fingers and thumbs as we increasingly rely on technology as a form of communication. So very critical. As you can see here, this is, this is indicative of the future, not only our congregation, but hundreds of others in the Western world, all over the globe, as we continue to become more proficient with technology and as people are better able to access it. But let us, let us be responsible with technology and let us be a caring community as we share with one another. Even though we're not present with one another, let us be mindful I want to share a prayer with you today. Ted Lauder is um, an American and uh, been in ministry all of his life. Uh, he wrote a, a poem that is, is a prayer. It's called, Help Me to Believe in Beginnings. Oh God, help me to believe in beginnings 
and in the beginning again, no matter how often I've failed before. Help me to make beginnings, to begin going out of my weary mind into fresh dreams, daring to make my own bold tracks in the land of now. To begin forgiving that I may experience mercy. To begin questioning the unquestionable that I may know truth. To begin disciplining that I may create beauty. To begin sacrificing that I may make peace. To begin loving that I may rejoice and realize joy. Help me to be a beginning to others, to be a singer to the songless, a storyteller to the aimless, a befriender of the friendless, to become a beginning of hope for the, for the despairing, of assurance for the doubting, of reconciliation for the divided, to become a beginning of freedom for the oppressed, of comfort for the sorrowing, of friendship for the forgotten. To become a beginning of beauty for the forlorn. Of sweetness for the soured. Of gentleness for the angry. Of wholeness for the broken. Of peace for the frightened. And violent of the earth. Help me to believe in beginnings. To make a beginning. To be a beginning so that I may not just grow old, but grow new each day of this wild, amazing life you call me to live with the passion of Jesus Christ. Let us share the Lord's Prayer as is found before you. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.